All right, folks, we're picking uh, chapter 6 back up. I'm on page 6.9. Basically, in the earlier section, we figured out how to count by weighing, so converting to moles, moles to grams, grams to moles. So the next thing we want to do is extend this to an actual reaction. So I have this reaction up here, uh, octane, basically, C8, H18, reacting with oxygen, excuse me, CO2 and water, uh, giving you the molar masses or the molecular weights, just to save time. And it says, I want to know how much CO2 is produced from the combustion of one gallon of gasoline. Well, I've given you a gallon of gasoline is 26, 2700 grams of the C8, H18. So I want to somehow go from this grams, a gallon of gas, to grams of CO2. So as I usually do, I'm going to start off with sort of a complicated example and lay the whole thing out. And then we'll come back and uh, break it down into smaller parts. Well, the first thing I need is a balanced chemical equation. I can't go anywhere unless I know that. Well, this looks messy, of course. But I might say, well, gosh, if I start with one there, I'd have eight there. <clears throat> one C8 gives me eight of the CO2s. Then I say, well, I've got 18 hydrogens there. Well, I need nine there. And the only way I can make this work, and you might want to stop the video and say, well, what coefficient has to go there? Well, I've got nine oxygens here. 16 here for a total of 25 oxygen atoms. So can I do this? The answer is sure. When we're talking about moles, I can use fractions like that. Before, when we were talking about atoms or molecules, I can have a fraction. Well, we still probably wouldn't do that. So I want all those numbers to be whole numbers. So if I multiply everything by 2, Now I've got sort of a, a proper, a conventional um, balanced chemical equation. Now, before we're sort of thinking like O2 molecules reacts with 25 molecules, react to produce 16 molecules and 18 molecules. Well, now when we're talking about quantities, we're going to really think of moles. So what this really is, is two moles of C8H18 to 25 moles O2 to 16 moles of CO2 to 18 moles of water. So we're going to, for quantities, we're going to think of moles. Now this becomes my recipe. When I see a chemical reaction, I'm going to say, oh, 2 moles of the C8 reacts with 25 moles of oxygen to give me 16 moles of CO2, 18 moles of H2O. There is my recipe. So the big idea here is my ratios in a balanced chemical equation are mole to mole ratios. Now we can convert from grams to moles, moles to grams. Now we have conversions moles of products, moles of reactants. Let's look at how we would do this. It says, I want to convert the mass of C8H18 to the mass of CO2. So just like we've been doing all along, I would say, well, OK, let me move my camera up a little bit. What I'm trying to get to is grams of CO2. And what I've been given is 2660 grams of the C8H18. And you know what we want to do? We want to do this dimensional analysis, multiply, divide by ratios or numbers until I can get grams of C8 canceled and just get to grams of CO2. So I might just start off and say, well, I don't, I don't know. I've got to cancel the grams of C8H18 somehow. 
Well, the only thing I know is grams per mole, so I might say, well, one mole of C8H18. Now, at the top of this page, I've given it to you. We could add up eight hydrogen or eight carbons, 18 hydrogens, and get there. But I say, oh, at the top of the page, you gave it to us. It's 114.22 for every one mole of C8H18. Okay, well that got rid of grams, but now I've got moles of the C8. Well, I'm really trying to get to CO2, so I might say, well, moles of CO2 to moles of C8H18. Well, that's my recipe right here. 16 moles of CO2 for every two moles of the C8H18. So, oh, okay. Well, this is just 16 to two. Canceled the grams of the C8, moles of the C8. I've got moles of CO2. I think, well, I really want grams of CO2 per mole of CO2, and that would work. Well, at the top of the page, I calculated the carbon and two oxygens, uh, 44.01 for every one. There it is. We had to know this new grams per mole business, but it's exactly the same thing we've been doing since chapter one. Now, I'll do all the math down here. So, I, I know my units are going to work out. Let's see. Grams of C8 have canceled. Moles of the C8 have canceled. Moles of the CO2 have canceled. And the only units I have left are grams of CO2. And that's not the only way to do this, but all the units have canceled. So I'm what? 2660 times 1 times 16 times 44.01. 114.22 times 2 times 1. And I get, oh, I have a number. I'm going to pause and get the number. Okay, that gives me 8199 grams. Now that's four sig figs. We had three sig figs. I don't know. Maybe we could do uh, 8.20 times 10 to the third grams, 8.20 kilograms, there's three sig figs, that's about 20 pounds. So think about that. Every time you burn a gallon of gasoline, probably about the amount of gas you could use to drive to Butte and home, there's about you know, 16, 18 pounds. If you drive to and from Butte College, you just did 30, 40 pounds of CO2 into the air. All right. Now, there's nothing new there. It looks kind of messy, but there's nothing new there. Let's do some simpler problems to kind of uh, solidify those sort of fundamental skills. Let's go to page 6.10. Okay. Here I've got nickel reacting with HCl, hydrochloric acid, to give me nickel 2 chloride and hydrogen gas, fizzing. And it says, okay, I'm going to react 9.81 moles of HCl. Well, I can't go anywhere until I get this balanced. Luckily, this is pretty easy to balance. One nickel, one nickel, one hydrogen, two hydrogen atoms. So, probably put that there. I'll go back and put that. Two HCLs, two, uh, two CLs, two CLs. Bingo, we're done. Now it says, I want to know moles of nickel. That's what I'm trying to get to. I've got 9.81 moles of HCl. Now stop the video and you, you figure out what the ratio is and what the math should be there. All right, you're back. You probably said, oh, I should have moles of nickel, moles of HCl. I go back to my recipe now. I'm one to two, which gives us, um, again, I don't have a number. Uh, well, I'll just do the math. 
9.81 divided by 2, and then 4.91 moles. 4.91 moles of nickel. Now here, let's do this one. Let's take that out. It says, okay, what if I start with moles of HCl? Yeah. And I want to get to moles of NiCl2. That's what I'm trying to get to. And I've got 12 moles HCl. What goes on top? What goes on bottom? What's my ratio? Well, I'd like to get rid of moles of HCl. I'm trying to get to moles of NiCl2, nickel 2 chloride. I go back and look at my reaction. Oh, that's 1 to 2. So, 12 moles of HCl would give me 6.00 moles of NiCl2. And what we're trying to show here is you can go products to reactants, reactants to reactants, products to products, anything we want. I have this recipe. I can convert it, calculate anything. It's the same as if we were making brownies and I needed two eggs for 24 brownies and I wanted to know, and I had uh, two eggs and one cup of sugar and 24 brownies. If somebody said, well, if I have, what if I have three eggs, how many brownies can I make? Or if I have three eggs, how much sugar do I need? Or if I want 50 brownies, how much sugar do I need? We can bounce back and forth, forth like that. All right. Here's a cool one for plant science folks and ag people. Plants convert CO2 with water to glucose and oxygen. So it says convert blah, blah, blah to glucose. So there's my reactants. There's my products. CO2 plus... H2O, C6, H12O6. And you remember, oxygen's never just O by itself. It's O2. Remember the diatomics? Have no fear of ice cold beer. One carbon, six. I'm going to go, well, I'll just try a six there. I'll come back and fix the oxygen last. Hydrogen, I've got 12 there, 2 there. 6 fixes that. I've got 12. I've got 18 oxygens here. I've got 6 here. I need 12 more. Bingo. There's my recipe. Now, I'm thinking about 6 moles. Reacts with 6 moles of water to give me 1 mole of glucose and 6 moles of oxygen. Now, that says, okay, I want to get to... I want to know how many moles of CO2, right? There's the how many, how much, what I'm trying to find. Starting with 15 moles of the glucose. So I'm really saying, okay, how many moles of this do I need to produce this? Well, I'm going to go moles of CO2, moles of glucose. I go back to my recipe and it says, oh, I need six moles of that to get one mole of glucose. So I need 90 moles of CO2. Now we're not really doing anything differently than we did in chapter one. I'm just looking for ratios set them up so the right things cancel and the right things are left, and that's it. Took a page uh, 6.11, a little more interesting, of course, a little more complicated. I've been given my recipe already. Four moles of HF reacts with one mole of SiO2 to give me one mole of silicon tetrafluoride and two moles of water. 
So it says, I'm trying to get to moles of HF. Just to remind me, that's the units I'm trying to get to. I'm going to start with 9.90 moles of SiO2, silicon dioxide. And, oh, moles of HF, moles SiO2. Those will cancel. I've got moles of HF. I put four and one. That's from my recipe. That's from the that's the ratios out of the balanced chemical equation. That gives me 39.6 moles of HF. That's hydrofluoric acid, HF. That's it. Now, let's go back to what we did with the first example with the octane and O2 and the CO2 and all that. Now it says what mass of water, okay, grams of H2O by the reaction of, so I've been given 23.0 grams SiO2. Now there again, as always, there are multiple ways to do this. I might even start off like this. I'm going to say, I'm trying to get to SO2, SiO2 from water. So I might do this. Moles of SiO2, moles H2O. I'm going right to the recipe. I got something on that paper. I'm going to get rid of that, whatever it was. I'm going to go right to the recipe. These units won't cancel, but that's okay. I go back up to the recipe, and it says, well, there's one mole of SiO2 for every two moles of water. I don't have grams of H2O, but I might say, oh, well, wait a minute. I want grams H2O per mole of H2O. Now I would stop the video. Go back to that page two periodic table and say, okay, two hydrogens, one oxygen. What should the what's the molar mass there? So I pause the video, calculate that. Okay, depending on which periodic table you use, how many sig figs, how many decimal places it has, you probably got 18.01, maybe 18.02 grams. Now I can see uh, that I. Screwed that up. Now this is actually good news. This is the beauty of not memorizing uh, algorithms that will screw up. I can see right away, well I didn't see it right away, but eventually, oh wait a minute, I got this all screwed up. I was trying to get to I was trying to get the grams of water, so this looks pretty good, but this has got to be flipped over. This must be wrong. Wait a minute, now I've got moles and moles. I've got moles squared. I haven't canceled the grams. So I just said, well, wait a minute. That that can't be right. That's all right. 23.0 grams SiO2. Moles H2O. Moles SiO2, and I'm going to go 2 to 1. Now I'm going to go grams H2O, moles H2O, 18.01 over 1. And now I can say, well, okay. The moles of the water are canceling, so I'm on the right track. Now, we st I still could have it screwed up, but the beauty is I'm not memorizing an algorithm. I could see like, oh, wait a minute, I'm down the wrong path. Pay attention, Wallace. So I get over here and say, okay, well, what do I still need? I'm trying to get the grams of water. I'd like to cancel moles of SiO2 and grams of SiO2. So I go moles SiO2, grams SiO2. Now, I'll give you this number. Stop the video and calculate the molar mass of SiO2. 
Okay, depending on which periodic table you used, how many sig figs you had, I had that. And I can see now moles of SiO2 will cancel, grams of SiO2 will cancel, and bingo. I know I've got this math right. So 23.0 times 2 times 18.01 times 1, 1 times 1 times 60.09. And I know that's grams of water. Now, here's a place where students often say, well, wait a minute, there's three sig figs, four sig figs, four sig figs, but one, 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 one. No. We're going to say, well, wait a minute, those are counting numbers. It isn't sort of like, well, four-ish or 3.7 or 4.8. No, it's four is precise, one, one, two. So the coefficients in the bounce chemical equation won't factor into our um, into our sig fig calculations. So you do the math, and uh, maybe I got this right: thirteen point eight grams of H two O. All right, let's look at the last page: six point one two. So, this is broken out into steps, just to sort of show, well, I guess maybe just to break down again and um, kind of show us the fundamentals again. So it says, this reaction happened and I got five grams of tungsten. And again, by the way, just so we don't have to go back and look all these up in the periodic table, I've given you the molecular weight. That's what that MW stands for. 5.00 grams. Tungsten's kind of funny. W. I know moles of tungsten. So I go, okay, grams of tungsten, mole of tungsten, one. And right off the periodic table, it is 183.85. So I get 0 0.0272 moles of tungsten. Now it says, okay, at that many moles, how many moles of this tungsten 6 oxide and moles of hydrogen were required to get to that? So I'm basically going to start with that back here. 0 0.0272 two moles of tungsten and I want to know moles WO3 moles H2O moles W moles WO3 same thing here moles WO3 H2 moles W. I go back to the balanced chemical equation. One to one, that one's easy. Turns out three moles are required for every one mole of tungsten. So I get 0 0.0272 moles of the tungsten, tungsten 6 oxide. I get 0 0.0816. And as always, if that number doesn't make sense, stop the video, punch it down to your calculator, make sure like, oh yeah, that works. Now the last step says, okay, let's do the moles to gram conversion again. It says grams WO3 grams H2. So I'm going to bring those numbers down. 0 0.0272 moles of WO3, 0 0.0816 moles of H2. So I know I'm going to have moles WO3, grams WO3, grams H2, 
moles to one. And I gave you this up at the top of the page there, 231.8. Again, it'd be a good idea to stop and say, oh yeah, can I get 231.8 for the molar mass? One mole of hydrogen, I said 2.016 grams. And one more sig fig. So I end up getting 6.30 grams WO3, 0 0.165 grams of H2O. Now really, I just did unit conversions, grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams, again and again and again. Students uh, now tend to find this pretty easy. When we used to do an algorithm and, oh, you do these three steps, and maybe you don't do this fourth step, um, there was a lot of error. But now, as you can see, I can screw it up. I can screw it up better than anybody. We go back to the other page. Oh, wait a minute. I got that screwed up. I can fix it. That'll serve you well in the real world. Um, that's all it is. Okay. The next video is from the last section in chapter uh, six. And it's, well, what if things don't work out exactly the way we want? All right. I'll see you in the next video.